Hey guys, Luton here. So MSI, who as you know are my channel's sponsor, were good enough to recently loan me an Optics MPG 27CQ monitor. Now I have some other things coming up for you guys soon, as well as including a full PC build giveaway. That's an entire PC build, more on that very soon. But I also want to include now and then on the channel some spot reviews of hardware, including I want to do like a microphone shootout soon. So this was fairly interesting for me as I actually haven't used a curved monitor before and I wanted to see how it would perform and generally feel for me after using it for a period of time as my main gaming monitor. Now it's also worth mentioning briefly that if you're in the market for a new monitor right now, MSI are running their Sun Fun campaign. When you're purchasing a monitor from Curry's PC World in the UK, you get some free extras thrown in and that offer runs up until the 30th of September. September. MSI often have some good offers running to give you extras, so if you're looking for a piece of hardware it's worth checking to see what they have going on or coming up, and sometimes these free extras can be just a nice cherry on top of something that you were already looking to purchase. Now this monitor that I'm looking at today is also eligible with their Tomb Raider campaign where you get a season pass for the game, so if you're in the market for a new monitor check out the rest of my overview here and maybe this will be a good option along with those extra bits and pieces. It should be noted though that Curry's do not currently stock this monitor, they stock the 27 inch Mag 27C which is only a 1080 not a 1440 monitor, but it is 144Hz and 1ms spec. They also carry an AG32C which is a 31.5 inch not a 27 inch version just for those who are interested in curved monitor markets. You're paying about £350-£400 for those monitors respectively and those are at Curry's PC World but I did check prices with other sites, they're comparable but variable with other stockers like scan overclockers etc. Anyway, on with this monitor, the MPG27Q. Now whenever I review things, I try to keep hold of them for as long as possible, whether it's my sponsor or anybody else, so I can spend some good time and actually get a feel for what it is, not just whip it out of the box, grab some footage and then write it up. So I've actually been using this monitor for a couple of weeks now to get an idea if it's something that you're going to want to use from a day-to-day -day basis. You can't really know that if you've just taken it out of the box, used for a short period of time and then have to send it away. So my short answer is yes, it does the job well, it gives you everything you'd want from a performance monitor for gaming as you would hope and expect the longer answer is well let's get into that first up what's the price of this you're probably going to want to know that straight away if it's in your budget or not so in terms of price this one is selling for what i would scheme as a fairly mid or mid to higher range price so it's currently coming in at about 470 pounds on ebuyer 480 on overclockers and 508 on scan now this monitor comes with all the stats you'd want, QHD 1440 resolution, also having that 144Hz refresh rate is something I always strongly look for. All the ports on the monitor support that 144Hz refresh rate as well, and once you've had a high refresh rate monitor, it's genuinely pretty hard to use anything less. It's one of those things that you wouldn't think actually made a massive difference if you haven't experienced it, but it does. Just in terms of smoothness and how snappy and reactive everything feels playing with that higher refresh rate. Both this and my existing monitor have this, so it was a seamless switch for me. It's a VA panel, which is preferable for me compared to a TN for color, but I still would choose an IPS panel every time if we're talking about color reproduction. The VA panels though do give more true black and clear white, so if you want something with striking contrast but maybe not as subtle color reproduction, then a VA is right for you. This monitor also features one millisecond response time, and that can be fairly standard these days, but it basically means your pixels are going to transition faster than anything longer than that. However, realistically, is this something you're going to notice? As with some things, people are going to say yes and others are going to say no. For me, it's never something that I've outstandingly noticed as being a selling point, but it is what it is and it's fast, so there you go. In terms of just the physical connections, this monitor has one display port and two HDMI. It does have also two USB 3 ports along with a 3.5mm headphone and mic connector. Um, I can't see personally why you'd be using those through the monitor, but they're there nonetheless. So let's talk about the curves and the general performance because that's really what we want to know. And before we finish up, I'll talk about some of the mechanical, the physical elements of this monitor. Now first up, this is a 27 inch 169 monitor. So the same as my current monitor, but just curved. Now I'm doing some reading around, some curved monitors use 21.9 screens to give that much wider and more encompassing feel to wrap around you, and it's hard to do that with a smaller curved monitor. Now I don't have a large curved monitor to compare this with, so I have to speculate a little bit that a 21.9 would just feel more of an effect than this smaller 16.9 version, obviously. So did the 16.9 curved monitor help me feel more immersed or pulled in more to the game and in general what I was doing? And the answer is kind of. Initially, I didn't really think it made much of a difference, but this is why I say I like to spend some time 
time with a product and not just a couple of days. The more I used it daily, the more I guess your eyes kind of key in with it and your peripheral vision acclimatizes with the shape. So over the course of a week, the answer is yes. I did feel, I don't think immersed is the right word actually, but drawn in, yes. I felt drawn into the action on the screen. As always, I play a variety of things from survival games to FPS to RTS, management titles, and all felt comfortable on the monitor. Although I think anything first person or third person was a step above top-down things like an RTS or management. I think perhaps because those games usually revolve around you laying out things, and I guess maybe I would lean towards a flat monitor for that. But certainly, it didn't inhibit my play or anything like that. And you guys will know by now that I'm quite finicky about the feel of things. Often when I choose or recommend a product, it's not just about pure stats for me. And stats are important, like having a high refresh rate. I've said this already. But I think personally, having a product sit right with you is definitely as important. You know that when I do reviews of games or anything, think I generally say it's always subjective and that's true with all things so the best that I can do is try to explain where I approach things from so it can help give you my reason for choosing or enjoying something be it a game or some hardware so my overall experience was good for game playing itself. I definitely did feel it draw me more into the games I was playing. However, I'll say that that effect was subtle. This was not like putting on VR and being sucked in. It's a much more subtle vibe that's more akin to, say, just setting the lighting in your room. It was more, I guess, uh, of an ambient feeling, more of a comfortable thing. I think depending on how important having that curved experience is for you, then of course you could look into wider curved panels or purchasing multiple curve to then run as one multi-screen setup. But of course, this is going to take a lot more to drive to ensure performance. So let's lastly go over some of the physical elements and actually these are where some of my gripes are although they're pretty small gripes to be sure. So let's talk about stability and ease of setup and as with many monitors the setup takes moments. It comes in three parts you bolt them together and clip onto the back of the monitor and you're done. No tools required extremely simple to set up as you'd hope it to be. The swivel on the monitor itself is good so you can easily turn the monitor to gain access to the rear port without having to awkwardly turn the whole stand or anything like that. But the stand itself I do have a gripe with. Whilst it's pretty to look at, the two front feet are nice and wide. They're very elegant and not too heavy or chunky. So aesthetically, they're nice. But the rear third foot extends way back for some distance. And this for me is a negative because it meant I had to position it on my desk. I had to move the whole thing forward several more inches than my current monitor sits at. And this is actually something I expect people don't often consider or don't think of immediately. I think when purchasing any monitor, you need to check the dimensions, not just of the panel itself, but but also the base. Ensure that it's going to fit within your workspace and that this is what you want for your setup. And let's also talk about the power adapter for the monitor. The cables on that were pretty short and I'm lucky with my office as I have multiple power sockets located around the room but that's because I installed an extra four ports when I set this room up so I could connect to things very easily. But if your power connection was not directly near to your desk you're definitely going to need an extender cable so that's another small gripe for me there. Now lastly, two parts, the GameSense system and also the OSD on-screen display. I should also say that as with all MSI stuff, this has got Mystic Light so you can have all the RGB there. Now I actually enjoy this kind of OSD monitor with the joystick on the rear and I find them easier and more intuitive to use than front-facing buttons. My current monitor has front-facing buttons to access the OSD and it's honestly a pain in the ass and quite clunky. On the MSI Optics Monitor, the joystick interface, really easy to use, responsive, enabled you to make corrections in seconds, which I'm sad to say would have taken me anything like 3 to 5 seconds on my current monitor. Again, you think 3 to 5 seconds, whatever, it doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference when you're trying to make small changes and you just are trying to get things done really quickly. With the joystick, I can just move it around and it's done, so it's a much more preferable setup for me. Now, the GameSense system. Now, this is more of an interesting concept, maybe than something that you're going to literally use. This refers to the LED lights that display along the front of the monitor. Now, I didn't test out this system, I only know its intended function, but I do think it's something that's pretty interesting and worthwhile as well about future investment. I would like to see this kind of pushed further, really. So basically, by default, the LEDs on the front just strobe a regular color sweep. And as I said with my recent Vigor GK80 keyboard review, RGB on peripherals and PCs themselves has always been something that I consider very subsidiary to the functionality of your hardware, because obviously. However, it's not something displeasing to have. In fact, having my keyboard sitting pulsing away on my desk is actually pretty relaxing, like a lava or math moss lamp. And the LEDs on the monitor here are much the same. I've seen people say in regard to this monitor that they can be distracting whilst gaming. Well, I tried with them on and off and I found it to be really not a big deal at all. I guess it could be distracting for some people, but it wasn't for me. Um, if you want them turned off, just a couple of clicks from the OSD and you're done. So you can have them on, you can have them off, you can turn them on after you finish gaming if it's just going to be there in the background, ambient, whatever you want. 
So what is this game sense with the LEDs? Well, the idea is basically that the lights could represent some of your in-game stats or elements, like ammo or whatever, and that when you maybe start to get low on ammo or maybe health, they would change colour so as to give you not just an on-screen UI information, but also a peripheral vision colour prompt. This kind of goes hand in hand with MSI's general thoughts about color setups when it comes to things also like the Vega keyboard where it has preset color layouts for different games core key functions. The issue with GameSense on the monitor right now is that the list of titles with it is very minimal, but would this be something that I would like to see rolled out or be cool to just program and maybe link to any game that you wanted? Absolutely, I think it's a pretty cool concept. I think it could also be done differently on your monitor at different times, you know, maybe even some elements on the side if you wanted to be able to set that up. But until it can support more than just CS, Dota and Minecraft, it's not really a major selling point. But still, some points there for thinking outside the box with something as straightforward as a monitor and trying to innovate and do something a little bit different there. And as I say like if it was to be able to be rolled out to different games or that you could actually program in how you wanted it to represent different elements of your game I think that could actually be quite helpful just to be able to have that sort of ambient peripheral prompt it's quite a nice thing to my overall conclusions about the MSI Optics MPG 27 CQ, I did think it was worth its money for a mid to sort of mid high range price monitor. As I say, this is always subjective because what's right for you is not right for everybody, but for me personally, I felt this was well worth its price point. It's coming in anywhere around 100 to 150 less than my current monitor, but it performs up to the same standard apart from the color differences between a VA and an IPS panel monitor. The curved element is certainly not for everybody, I think, but it grew on me more than I thought it would. I think in the future if I was going to upgrade my existing monitor to a curved setup, it's certainly something that I'd give some real serious consideration. The Optics MPG 27CQ is a fairly inoffensive step into the world of curved monitors, because it's got all the stats there but it's not too severe in its curviness. It pulls you in but without distorting things or making it uncomfortable. It's a solid monitor, 144Hz refresh rate, 1ms response, VA panel, nice OSD functionality and it looks good on your desktop. It is what it is, it's a solid piece of hardware in my opinion, and if you're in the market for a monitor in that price bracket and fancy having some soft curves, you're not going to go far wrong with this choice. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this today, I hope you've enjoyed, thanks for watching as always. If you enjoyed please drop a like and a comment, if you purchased these or you've got a curved monitor set up, tell us what you think down below, greatly helps me as always and the channel guys. This is Luton, I have more info on the upcoming build giveaway very soon for you, check below this video to find all the links you're going to need for the campaigns and the store links. I'll see you on the next one.